convene the meeting of the Board of Selectmen or Select Board, excuse me. Do you hear us, Joyce? Yep. Right. Um, we're going to move around the agenda a little bit, but first we need to um, make note that we have a Select Board member who is geographically incapacitated. Uh, and will thus we will need to have all votes be roll call votes. Um, so just to let people know why we're doing that uh, at this meeting. We are going to move the agenda around a little bit. We're going to go to town administrator updates first. You mean special town meeting award? Sure. Yeah, that's what I'm for. Four, eight. Oh, I thought you pointed to five on my little oh, sorry, cheat no. sheet here. Oh, 4E, okay. I missed by an inch, I think. 4E. This is 4E is discuss the plan, discuss and sign the warrant for special time meeting. Yeah. Okay. December 12th. So you have copies of the, of the draft, uh, well, won't be draft warrant, but the warrant for the special time meeting to be held on December 12th, 2018 at 7 p.m. There are three articles that are proposed. Um, Article one is, as we previously discussed in the last meeting, the need for the water commissioners to increase their borrowing authorization from $410,000 to $440,000, and that's um, for the manganese filtration system. That requires a two-thirds vote. Article two, we have unpaid bills of a previous year of $19.88. That's from the Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative which didn't get to us in time. And then Article 3 would be to vote to repurpose the unexpended funds from uh, a warrant article that appropriated funds for to repair the town hall, uh, town highway garage roof. There's 40, just almost $4,800 left. Um, and what we're requesting is that that be repurposed to allow for painting and exterior repairs patch the uh, patch some of the cinder blocks and to paint the building is that gonna be a sufficient amount of money should be I'm told that we need money to patch it and to buy paint but that um, we'll do it the work in-house yeah. so isn't like it's gas from the next budget right we could yeah if he's hoping to do it in the okay in this yeah. do any of these need uh, Finance committee. Um, so, I was just able to schedule a, um, a finance committee meeting for December 11th. So they'll have an opportunity. It won't be on the warrant, but they'll have opportunity to comment on the articles at the meeting if they need to. Have they seen it? Have they seen these yet? Individually. Um, no. This happened uh, kind of in a short order. Okay. Well, there's no a, a additional money. It's money we already have, well, other than the nineteen dollars. I guess right. it's the only addition. Right. Right. Okay. The other two is borrowing or money already right. appropriated. They have, they have not had a meeting to discuss these yet. No. Okay. All right. So what do we need to do, Brian? Just sign it. Yep. Okay. Right. Joyce, you got a pen? I, I do, I, in fact, I, I do have a pen. Okay, I'll hold it up. Good. Maybe someday we can sign electronically. And the thing my hand's just going to come right through that screen. No, I'll actually be back before too long. I think we'll have one more meeting in this format, and then I'll be back. When are you back? Anyway. Do you have a, a set date in January that you're back? I work, I actually arrived Christmas night. Christmas oh, oh, night. Oh. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. Now the boys are meeting us at Logan Airport, so we'll, we'll have a, a little bit of late Christmas. So if there's a meeting that last Tuesday. Thank you, Lynn. Um, yes. That last week, I could be there for that too. But, uh, oh, I guess the 25th is the last Tuesday. <laughs> Well, I won't be there. Probably be there for a 6 p.m. meeting. Okay. Um, we will go back to the agenda. 
uh, review and vote on the meeting minutes from November the 7th, 2018. Uh, those were recently amended, am I correct, Brian? I sent you a revised, yeah. a revised version. All those in favor, uh, or make a motion? Second. Aye. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yes. Comments from the public not listed on the agenda? Anybody? Any people here tonight? Okay, then. We'll scratch that agenda item off the list. And we'll go to old business. Discuss and vote to enter into a host agreement with Toro Verde, Massachusetts uh, Toro Verde 3. Uh, incorporated 424 State Road, Wheatley, Massachusetts. Um, Brian, remind us again where 424 State Road is? That's the Sugar Loaf Shops. Sugar Loaf Shops. Which part of the Sugar Loaf Shops? The Red, bu red Building. The northerly most one. The northerly most one, correct. Okay, what do we got? Yep. Um, well, Attorney Evans is here representing uh, Tor Verde or Harvest. Tor Verde. Tor Verde. Um, and he had uh, formatted the, or, or we had sent him the host community agreement that we had done with Urban Grown. And he provided some, I don't, this was two meetings ago, our last meeting, he had provided the board with a, a copy of those of those changes. Uh, Lynn's got the sign. Well, thank, thank you. you. Um, and Joyce and I have reviewed them and we had suggested um, one ch uh, changes in terms of number nine, a charitable donation that would be um, raised from five to 10,000 and also for educational programming to be raised from five to 10,000 because the board had previously talked about wanting to um, ask for those donations, ask those to be scaled up based on the, the size and type of the facility. But other than that, I believe the, the agreement is, is pretty much the same. Um, Joyce, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, no, I don't have anything to add to that. It's uh, uh, essentially the same agreement we have with the growers uh, who are um, who are setting roots in town. And um, the uh, because it's a retail establishment, we changed those two things because we had talked, I don't know if you all um, uh, remember, because this was back when we were having like three hearings per meeting. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the question had come up is what if we try to apply to get uh, more square footage at our greenhouses. Um, and we said, well, well, then it's a new host agreement and this will be uh, proportional. So for a retail establishment, it seemed like uh, uh, raising that was probably a, a reasonable thing to do. And um, that's where we stand. And the education component remains, is that correct? Right, with a, with a higher amount than the growers. We had a tier two grower. I think is the one we have find and sealed them for. Um, so it's not, so you know, in, in some ways, you're not comparing apples to oranges, but you know, we'll do our best. Got it. Okay. Uh, these, it says in here for years two through five. What's what happens in year one? That came up in, in discussions with Urban Grown, and they wanted to have the opportunity to establish cash flow or be cash positive before they would be required to make donations. So the well, board agreed to those terms where they would grow. Yeah. If it's, a, if it's a grower, I could see it, but if you're doing, this is for retail. Retail, you're gonna have the product there done, whatever, the first year, aren't you? You're not waiting for the product to grow. Uh, I, yeah. Right? Where, 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 when do you? Do we wanna? So you've heard from Joyce and I, do we want to? I, I don't know, answer? what year one, there's nothing, I guess. I, I could see, like I was saying, for, for growing, it's gonna take you a while to grow and process and harvest and whatever you have to do to it. So it may be close to year two, but if you're open a retail shop, I assume you're gonna well, do it yeah. rather quickly guess, after you open yeah. the doors. Yeah, that, that, may, that may be true, Fred, but my, my thinking on this was that you know, any new business, especially one with the security requirements and so on that these establishments have, are are going to have to concentrate on it their first year. 
And that same, that same is true for the growers. They've got the similar kinds of requirements for security and so on. So I, I didn't think that of the delay as um, necessarily related to the fact that plants take time to grow. Yeah. Um, that, so I, I, yeah, I, I suppose you know, we could say, oh, geez, the plants are already grown and you can start making money right away. Um, I was more just thinking that, you know, in, in your first year, you might get your business off the ground. You know, that's, was, uh, that was kind of my thinking at the time. I want to give uh, our guest an opportunity to, to chime in. Um, my immediate reaction is, as I like to do, is to perhaps find the middle ground here because if you follow the news over the past 48 hours, um, the two retail locations that are up and running right now are noticing much higher than anticipated traffic and revenue generation. Um, uh, specifically, to, to try to compare apples to apples, um, the town of uh, Leicester, Leicester, which is in, in the Worcester area, um, is doing quite well for themselves in, in, in the first hours of operation. Um, so I, 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 I am cognizant of the, the concerns that a, that a startup would have. Um, that being said, I, if I were a betting person, these startups are going to do quite well, uh, especially those that open earlier than others. Um, but, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Dick Evans. I'm a lawyer in Northampton. I'm here on behalf of Tory Verdi. I've got a few things I'd like to say tonight. Um, and if you'd allow me a few minutes uh, to do so, I'd be grateful for that. Uh, first of all, what you saw in Northampton and Leicester this week, I don't think anybody will see again. I can report to you that the lines in Northampton are down to about 50, 75 feet long today. They were tonight about an hour ago. The place is right around the office. They're right, right around the corner from my office, so I've been able to monitor it every day. That line's getting shorter and shorter every day. And I'm confident. I mean, I wish there were going to be lines uh, a year from now, uh, but uh, unlikely very likely to be seeing traffic issues. And I might add, in Northampton, was the traffic situation was very well organized. There, were no, there was no chaos at all, no problems. At least everybody did a great job there. Um, let me say first that Toro Verde is a, is a startup, but it's affiliated with a large company named Harvest. And Harvest, they're out of Arizona. They've had, they have uh, medical dispensaries in about there are about 30 or so medical dispensaries around the country. They're in, I think, 19 states, mostly medical operations. They're looking to expand. They are very deep in terms of their experience and their management team, very deep in, in uh, legal and scientific and, and business and finance, uh, a really, really solid operation. And they are very supportive of, of charitable organizations, they, they sponsor a, a uh, <clears throat> foundation called the Harvest Foundation, or Hope, uh, Harvesting Hope is the name of it, uh, for young uh, pediatric children uh, experiencing epileptic uh, issues, as well as uh, a, a mountain climbing event for raising money for uh, the, the cancer fund and other such things. They're a very well established group, and everything I know, very, very well respected. Uh, they are affiliated with the uh, organization that's buying Pioneer Gardens in, in Deerfield. And they expect to be doing their cultivation and maybe, maybe uh, product manufacturing in the future. But for now, their plans is to use uh, the, the greenhouses at Pioneer Gardens in Deerfield for cultivation to supply this and other stores in the area. They're, they're, uh, they'll be doing stores in Northampton and in Greenfield as well as what we assuming if it's approved locally. Um, what, what they're proposing for the sugar loaf shops is, uh, is uh, you know, retail stores, we know. Um, they will be compliant with all the CCC rules regarding packaging, uh, labeling, those things. And as you know, the regulations, the CCC regulations are about 100 pages long. There's an immense 
uh, list of, of rules to follow. And the CCC will be doing the heavy lifting in terms of enforcing those rules. It's not a, they will not be enforced by local authorities. Um, the, the retail store, as do all their retail stores around the country, will offer free educational materials to consumers uh, concerning uh, the strains, dosages, uh, how to avoid problems with marijuana. Obviously, there won't be any products visible from the outside. Um, and we are yet to go through the ZBA and the special, uh, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, planning board. Uh, we'll be submitting those applications in the next week or two and hope to have public hearings, um, you know, probably in January, I suspect, uh, on the site plan approval and the special permit. So, um, as you know, we had a community outreach meeting on October 24th. I know there's been some grumbling in town, but there weren't enough people there. And, and you've heard me say before that actually that's the best attended one I've seen. Um, but let, let me just add that, that there's going to be public hearings. It could be for the site plan and the special permit, probably in this room. And there will be, uh, and, and we, we picked that time. We had it at noon, as you know, on a weekday. And that was intensely chosen because this is a commercial operation. There aren't, it's like one house, I think within 300 feet, maybe two. Um, and, and we thought this was the appropriate time and place to, uh, to invite the, for the neighbors. I mean, the neighbors are all commercial operators. And, and not only did we send notices as required to all the providers, the owners of all the properties, but we also sent somebody else up, up there to distribute personal invitations to all the, everybody within that neighborhood. So I, maybe that's why we got a good turnout. Uh, so so um, it's not like we were trying to pe prevent anybody from coming. We, were, we, wanted to, we wanted to reach out to the neighbors. This is a condominium project. We we're one of three structures in this condo. A lot of people work in that building. And we wanted to make sure everybody there had the opportunity to come and come into the store, look around, ask questions, which is what we did. Now, um, on the host community agreement, as you know, uh, it's one of the conditions uh, of submitting the CCC applications, and that's what, what brings me here today. I've got, frankly, I have problems with this host agreement. Uh, I won't go into all of them, but, but I have problems with the recitation on uh, page 2 in paragraph 6 that the town reasonably expect to experience a number of problems increase in light pollution, objectionable odors, traffic, police, fire, all that stuff. There is no, frankly, I don't think there's any reasonable basis to anticipate any significant cost on behalf of for reason of any of those things. Uh, I've not seen, I, in fact, I've asked municipal officials over the last six months or so, uh, what actual expense uh, have you incurred by reason and, of having a dispensary. I've asked the mayor of Narkowitz this question a number of times. I, I had occasion to ask the mayor of Somerville a couple of months ago, what actual expenses have you encountered with regard to, or as a result of having this operation? None of them can come up with a dime yet. I've yet to hear any actual expense that, that this operation will um, cost to a municipality. And on the other hand, there are enormous benefits. Now, you saw the news that, that Netta and the place in Leicester took in, what, a million dollars in their first week. It was 400,000 the first 24 hours, I think. And if you figure half of that goes to Netta, well, <laughs> that's what's that, $6,000 that the town of uh, uh, City of Northampton just picked up, and they're 3%. Uh, and the amount of money that the town could be getting from this is it's fairly significant. We're talking six figures on your 3%. And that, that's with your your 3% of the excise tax you know, that, that goes to Commonwealth, I mean, it goes to Boston and it comes back to you. Then you've got the community impact fee, which is another 3%, another six figure figure. Now you've added these $10,000 assessments or exactions for, for these two funds in paragraph nine. I think it's unreasonable, I may say so. It's a lot of money. We will be generating a lot of money, but there is nothing, no authority whatsoever in the statute that allows cities and towns 
to exact these kinds of funds. In fact, the statute is pretty clear that the community impact fee is to be restricted to 3% over five years. Now, the, the, uh, I'm fully aware that a lot of cities and towns are demanding additional beneficial payments. And it's not clear to me, this, the language of this statute is, I mean, if your agreement is uh, shall contribute, and I assume you mean shall pay, but it's, you don't mean it's voluntary, I think you mean it's mandatory. Um, and uh, I know a lot of cities and towns are getting away with it, but it's, I don't think it's authorized. There's, there's rumor of litigation against cities and towns that are demanding more than the 3% over five years. Um, and, uh, and I anticipate as well that there will be uh, legislation filed in the legislature pretty soon that will, that will address the issue of these additional charges to which the establishment's been put. And probably, I hope, will provide that nothing beyond the 3% over four, uh, several or five years will be enforceable. But that's in the future. Right now, the reality is, my client wants to come to Waitley. I think he would be a fabulous, or they would be a fabulous addition to this community. Uh, I think asking them to make these two $10,000 payments is really going too far, if I may say so. We want to come in, we want to be a good citizen, a, get off to a good start in this town, and hopefully operate for a number of years. And I think Waitley will benefit immensely from this. And to demand that they pay these, this 10,000, 10,000, it's just kind of a slap in the face, frankly. And, and, uh, and, and you know, we want to get off to a good start here. And, 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 and starting with a, with a mood of resentment, I don't think, is a very good start. So my request, sorry I was talking so much, my request is that you would not charge, not, not require those, that $20,000. Um, I would suggest that we adopt the language that's actually in the CCC uh, guidance. Do you, were you able to distribute that guidance next to well, well, this is the guidance that the CCC distributes. On, on host agreements. And, and it, it has no authority in there, it refers to no authority for, for demanding beyond 5%, 3% uh, over five years. And, and they do have language, which I've borrowed. It's, um, Yes, on the third page of the bottom, the company agrees to work collaboratively. I mean, that's, that's the kind of language that I think is reasonable we could live with. And, and I would like to suggest that, that, that you not demand those two payments in paragraph 9 and 10, and instead replace paragraph replace both those paragraphs with one paragraph that reads as follows. What page are you on? Uh, on page two of the host agreement. Oh, host agreement, okay. What is the recommended language? The applicant <coughs> agrees to work collaboratively with the towns and provide staff to participate in a reasonable number of town-sponsored educational programs on public health and drug abuse prevention geared toward public health and public safety personnel, including, but not limited to, conducting free seminars for consumers and townspeople to learn about the safe and responsible use of marijuana. Well, I have a number of reactions, but initially I, I want to point out that uh, my perspective on the education piece is uh, as much geared towards young people as it is towards um, your 18 and over towns people. We have a small community and um, in my eyes the, the money going towards educational services would be directed at the schools specifically above and beyond any public education that is done for adults in the town. 
the proximity of both this location and the growing facility is relatively close to the school. And for anyone to think that, that kids will turn a blind eye to these types of facilities and wonder what's going on, um, it's just not rooted in reality. So the educational component to this, in my eyes, goes directly towards making sure that children are aware, they're aware of the, of the detrimental effects of, of cannabis on a, a, a mind and body of, of under 18 years old. Under 21 years old is a lot. Yes, I'm assuming you do the same so, thing for alcohol too, right? So, absolutely. Yeah, right. And, 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 and that costs money. It, it just simply does. And um, to the point about um, making contributions to a charitable donation, if the if if the guesstimates, pretty good guesstimates on revenue streams are any indication, um, any business worth their salt is looking for ways to lower their tax burden in the form of a charitable donation. That's why charitable donations are made by by businesses large and small. So, I well, this is not a donation though. This is a requirement, right? Or if it's a donation, okay, it's, it's it's semantics, but it's well, it, you're still no, making a, no, you're still making a donation as this is written. You're still making a donation to a charitable. No, we'd be required to make. Oh, that okay, donation. but it's still so a that's donation. That's not a donation. No, that's, that's, well, the IRS wouldn't allow that as a donation. It's a mandatory payment, it, which you will be able to write off on your taxes, and, and unless I have missed. Uh, the, the, the most recent tax uh, ta tax changes, it is still going to be a write-off on your taxes because it will be seen by the IRS as a charitable donation. Well, it may be a write-off, but it's not a charitable donation. It's a mandatory payment. It will be a write-off that your company will be eager to make because they will be looking to lower their tax burden. That's, that's business one-on-one. -on -one. Don't use the specific language in here. But it's still going to a charitable organization. Yeah. That's business 101. You make those things, you you are in the good graces of, of local charitable organizations, and you get a tax benefit. I, 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 so I, I, I guess I'm, I'm struggling. I'm happy to discuss the, 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 the amount, but to, you know, and, and if the legislature wants to take this up, then they're more than welcome to take it up. But I'm, you, you watch the number of towns that are now pushing back on having these types of businesses in, t in, in their community. When push comes to shove, they're, they're realizing they may not want it. We are welcoming this uh, as a, a mutually beneficial arrangement. And I do see it as an economic <clears throat> benefit to the town. But again, this isn't designed to kill business from coming here. This is designed to create a partnership between a public entity, the town, and a private entity, Toro Verde. So I, I, I guess I I, I, I I struggle with your language that, I, I forget the specific language you used, but you were you were essentially affronted by by this municipal agreement. No, I said I had a few problems with it. Well, I think you had used a little stronger language than that, to be honest with you, and we have it here. So. Well, I, I, those are my problems with it, though. And, uh, um, but, so, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. So, so we're, we're talking a difference of, of 10,000 a year over four years if we go with this schedule of, so that makes a difference of $40,000 to the town. Well, over it's actually four eight. years. The difference, so, between five and 10, though, John. Oh, oh, yes, that's The that difference that's between five and 10. It's either 40,000 or 80,000 going to the <coughs> town. And the no, it's not necessarily going to the town, it's going to the, you know, part of it's going to a charitable organization which, which would not go to the town. Okay, but but the first year, uh, if it follows like others, 
uh, we would just get to 3%. We're still going to get to 3% of gross sales. So that's... That is not related. That's not related. That's not related here. You've got 6% gross sales. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's not related to this. So, so we're still going to get yeah. that. The, the difference is uh, the charitable donation and the education. Uh, Let's let Joyce talk a little bit okay. about her thoughts on this. Yeah, um, well, I like to say I, I, um, I agree with John about the education piece. I don't think that um, you all running seminars to educate your customers about your products counts as education. I'm talking about educating our children and, and especially the high school. The high school is you know, even probably closer than the elementary school is to where your, your site is going to be. So, um, you know, running workshops in the community is kind of like, you know, giving, giving you a chance to round up customers and talk to them. You know, that, that's how I see it. And maybe I'm being cynical, but that is how I see it. Um, I don't think that uh, $20,000 a year should be that big a deal for a, a retail outlet like that. Um, I mean, I feel like people are coming in to use the resources of our town and you're coming in and, and we're working and interacting with our community and I think we as a board have to make sure that our community benefits to the best extent possible. And you, you said, well, we're not authorized to do that. Well, there's no prohibition either. And this is kind of our way of saying this is what we expect of good neighbors. And I, and I know you're, you're parent company does lots of uh, good work in lots of places and we're asking for something I think rather modest and then we will agree on that but I think what we're asking for is is truly modest given the other numbers you're throwing around so while I you know I hear you and I understand what you're saying and you're you know you're obviously arguing the the opposite side of this um, I think the agreement is reasonable. I think other marijuana, other marijuana businesses in town have uh, agreed with that. I don't see any reason to treat your company especially different from the other marijuana um, businesses that are coming up and down. And they I just I haven't heard anything uh, compelling to change any of these things. I also, I also want to point out that if your stated statistics are accurate, that we're talking six figures at both the 3%, that's just 3% of your profit. Um, back of the envelope math, that means you guys are making a tremendous amount of money, of which an additional Twenty, forty thousand dollars is going to be a drop in the bucket compared to what your ledgers will look like. It just, it, it, if if the three percent, it, it just, it's it's mind numbing how much money you're going to make if that three. I mean, it's just three percent. It could be. It, it, so that is yeah. mind numbing, and so to yeah. push back on, on not lining the pockets of the town, but doing education for young people providing to a charitable organization. I, I, it, it strikes me as sort of wanting your cake and eating it too. If the money, well, if the the money we're talking about is accurate. Well, I'm sure there are plenty of people with money that could pay a lot more than they are assessed in taxes. It's not, it should not be, it should be based on your community's needs and not the, 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 the uh, revenue that's being generated. Now, I think we need the education. But, but, but sir. It's, this it's, is a brand new uh, venture in our town. It's something that our, our kids and uh, their parents have not really had to deal with in the past. This is brand new. I think that's a community need to have a really strong education component in our schools. Okay, and our schools are largely funded locally. We don't get a heck of a lot of money from the state on this. And the other money we're asking for is for nonprofits in our community. Okay, they're not they're not particular. They're not you know having you know lavish shindigs anywhere. Uh, what we're talking about, you know, people trying to build a community 
and, and doing it really on a shoestring. And we're asking you to contribute to those things. And those, I think, are needs in our community. Okay, okay they're not luxuries. They're needs. Okay, getting back to, to my, my concern about my start year two, you know, for the education program, you're, you're saying you're start year two. Well, it seems you'd want to start year one. You're pre year one. We're pre year one. And, and so, what is the town or our school system going to have to put that in their budget to educate our, our students that this is something to educate them about marijuana? I mean, we got one year that's gapped, that, that's no funding at all, which is probably the biggest impact on the town, the biggest impact on the community the first year. At least the education program, I think that should start in year one, not year two. The charitable donation, I guess I may be flexible on that, but I think education has to start the day you open the doors, not to not in year two after you're there for a year. And, and I can tell you, having, having someone who lives quite close to me on the school board, <laughs> uh, parents are very nervous about this. Parents are very nervous, but more nervous than I anticipated because. I, I led the, I, I was a, 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 a vocal proponent of, of bringing marijuana to this town because of the revenue. So I, I don't want to be painted as someone who's against this. I, I think this is great for the town. And I think it's 21st century stuff. But we're all trying to be reasonable here. And I agree. We education are. is incredibly, incredibly important. And again, I guarantee you, if your numbers are what they are, you are going to be looking for charitable donations to be made. You are going to look to reduce your tax burden. Let's start by creating a good relationship here upon with which my client will want to make these contributions. But I think you're, you're, just, you're, you're putting the squeeze on them, Frank. And, 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 uh, <laughs> Can we, I mean, I, I, you know, I, what I'm hearing from my end of things is that, you know, Waitley is, is, is they think you're being very reasonable. And I tried to point out that no, that every, a lot of people are doing this. Not everybody, but a number of towns are going over the three year 5% thing. And, uh, and they've all gotten away with it so far. Uh, and I've seen some outrageous demands actually beyond this. Um, what can we do here? I, I, I'll, I, mean, I don't want to put the burden on Joyce because she wrote this thing, and, and I, but I would value Joyce's reaction to this, and I'll follow Fred's lead. Um, if we started in year one with with five thousand on education, and then went to 10 on education years two through five. And then on the charitable contribution, had it at zero until we saw tax returns and we could set a benchmark for what the gross revenues came to. Oh, John, that's getting complicated. I understand that, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a middle ground here, Joyce. So I, yeah, I think you see I, where I'm going with it. So I got a I'll suggestion. Just... I, 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 I'm, I'm fine with starting payments earlier, um, but I, you know, it, I, would, I would not find something tonight that is the amendments that he's proposed. I think, you know, we'd have to think long and hard. We've, we've, we put a lot into coming up with the agreement we had. Um, and it would be extremely unfair to those who've already come on board, um, who are willing to invest in our community in the education and in the nonprofits. Um, it would be like more negative to come back and say, oh, you're not making these out of towners do it? I, I couldn't agree more. That's why I'm talking about just year one, Joyce. Change, you know, making, making the burden on year one, which we don't have anything on the previous one. Yeah. We're still escalating, just not escalating as as steeply yeah, in but year you, one. Don't make it complicated, John. Don't could make we, it complicated. Could we do this? Could we, could we rewrite it so it starts in year one, but it's at 5K five, five or to each of them? Oh, I think we do better at math than that. And then it goes to 10 in years two through five? Yeah. Starts 
start with five in the first year and then go and then, go, and then goes to per the per what you've written let's let's go to year three why <laughs> so you take the second years into years one and two and then have year three four and five be at 10k yes. so that the total over five yeah. years is the same well, I'm saying uh, uh, that I could five say. for each of them, for year one and year two, and ten for years three, four, and five. And that's for both education? Yes. And, and charitable. for charitable? Yes. So it's the same total amount of money over five years? Yeah, it just ramped up slowly. I, I, could, I could live with that. Okay. Well, so it's, it's really just so, so we're rearranging. In year one, lots of money. Five and in year five. one, we'll pay five and five. In year two, we'll pay five and five. And then year three, and three, four, five. and five. Ten and ten. 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 Yeah. Joyce, how are you with that? I think the numbers add up to the same amount. No, it's twenty thousand less than what's written now. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, it's, got twenty so, times four. Okay, eighty. Okay, that's eighty. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I, I, instead of 20, 0, 20, 40, 20, 80, yeah, okay. 2020, yeah. it's 10, 10, 20, 20, 20. I'm fine okay. with that. Yeah. Um, I think as long as they add up, I don't care if, what year's dollars it is necessarily, and that we're getting money earlier, which is something that is nice. Which is critical, I think. I really do think that's critical. Okay. Right. And, and the other parts of the agreement, yeah, I, I agree with some of the community impact. It was written for growers, cultivators rather than retail. Uh, well, I don't, I don't agree with that, that myself. The, the police are going to be. Well, the, no, I'm not talking police or the community, but the <coughs> objectionable odors and light pollution. I, I don't know if that's applicable just a retail store. I believe retail has to be well lit as well. I believe. Yeah. Well, it, it light pollution, you don't know if that's in the store or in the parking lot. Oh, I don't I think don't they'd be know. more more lit than the than the yeah, current stores are. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's going to change on the exterior. Yeah, if it's not going to be smelly, then you don't have to worry about objectionable smells. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Okay. I I, I think that I, I want to keep per Joyce's comment earlier about somebody's already signed this, and we're not going to change what somebody's already been more than happy to sign. Right. Um, and, and I think that the change I propose is deductible because it doesn't change the total amount of money. Right. If, that, if it's just taking the uh, contribution from year two and averaging it over years one and two, then I think that that's very defensible. So I would like to hear a motion. In the, in the, well, the, excuse me. The, I'm, yeah. I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. So we're sure. suggesting that in year one, We'll pay five and five, a total of 10,000. Yep. In year two, same thing. Yep. In the year three, four, and five. As written. 20 and 20, as written. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I, I guess I, to make it simplified, I will make a motion that we adopt and sign this uh, host community agreement uh, okay. with the amendment that uh, the charitable and educational components are read as $5,000 each for year one. In year two, the charitable and educational components drop from the listed at 10 down to five each. And then as written, years three, four, and five at $10,000 each. Okay. That's the motion on the table. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. You, me? Yes. Passed. So do we need something that's... So uh, yeah, how do we... Now Now it's Brian's ballgame. Well, well yeah. we'll have to redraft it, and then I'll... Then, as long as you guys have voted on it tonight, you can sign it. Um, All right. we'll, and there's we'll another form, to too, that needs to be signed that goes with it. I'll just... I'll send that up. See that's okay. Right. John so needs to sign it. All right. Okay. Uh, well, thank you all. No, thank you. We'll be seeing you, you. in the... You, you haven't seen the last of me. Well, good. Now, we, we <laughs> want this to be a, a friendly, productive relationship. Well, I hope it will be. Um, okay. okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks and, uh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right, Brian. Uh, <laughs> town hall building policy. Everybody's favorite recurring topic. <laughs> this is going to rival castaways in a couple meetings. Oh, oh no. Well, I hope not. Yeah. Okay. So, at our last meeting, we talked, um, and we had some conversations with folks in the audience. We talked about um, some potential revisions to the policy, and we put it out on the website again, and I received um, feedback from three people, maybe. Um, and we can review the, the changes quickly if we want to, um, but most of them are, are pretty minor. Um, and I know Joyce had a couple other changes that one of them was uh, yeah. something that should have been changed. They're pretty small. Because I well. editorial. didn't have some. Well, one was editorial. Two of them were actually just adding something to. We, we've got, like, in um, Section 9, yeah. um, they uh, that you, know, you can't smoke any substance included but not limited to tobacco. I think we should actually specifically say e-cigarettes count as, like vaping counts as smoking there. Yeah. That, we, that, um, that that should be added to 9.3. Um, and uh, 9.4 addresses you know, something that is legal to, it's legal to drink alcohol in Massachusetts, but we don't want to have any town hall. I think the same thing for consumption of uh, marijuana and cannabis products should also be prohibited at the town hall. I think we should treat it like alcohol. Um, and uh, certainly to be on the safe side. Um, you, even, though, even though it's probably included in 9.3? Is included in what? The smoking of any substances. But marijuana is not just something that you that, smoke. That's right. a very fair and valid point. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was wondering if, if language along the lines for 9.3, um, the smoking or vaping of any substances included but not limited to tobacco and cannabis and the use of legal substances in the town hall and on town hall property is strictly prohibited. <laughs> I think that sounds like it includes what I was talking about, yeah. And then for 9.4, um, I guess it would be in the, cause, well, the consumption of alcohol and and or cannabis in the town hall and a town hall property is strictly prohibited. Mm -hmm. That would be fine. I think those would cover it. I um, Like that would count the gummy bears that are made with cannabis. Yeah, that really is, for uh, something that, that uh, covers the non-smoked products. I, I, I would like to suggest we add some language language around that this usage rule will be revisited in a certain amount of time. Um, I am. I, I think people need to understand that we we at least in my mind, at some point we will we will revisit the alcohol policy in town hall. Um, I. I I personally don't get why it's there cut and dry, um, but I'm willing to understand that this is a, a trial period and we, we don't know what we don't know yet. Uh, but again, um, if at some point people have a show and during intermission they choose to sell wine, um, I don't think we should close the door on that in perpetuity. Uh, and to that end, I, I think we should talk about uh, overtly that that policy will be revisited at some point in the future so that no one's taken by surprise. Well, why don't you look at number 11 and talk about amending the policy at any time. Is that where you would put it? Or does that cover what you're talking about? If you amend it at any time, any duly notice meeting of the select board. Right, this is, a, this is the policy of the select board. Yeah, I mean, you want to put within one year? Revisited within a year? Oh, well, I think it should be revisited before within a year, but. I, I don't want this building to sit there unused because it's so restrictive. 
And I don't think alcohol, or keeping alcohol out is that restrictive. No, I, I think um, it marginalizes a certain type of nice function. You, you wouldn't see, and, I, and I'm not gonna, and don't take this comparison completely literally, uh, but if you went to Symphony Hall in Boston, I guarantee you at, at the BSO con Christmas concert, they're gonna serve a glass of, they're gonna sell wine at intermission. Well, I'm not sure the BSO is coming all the way up lately. Well, but you get my point. I mean. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I really think in our first year, we've, we've got to do this. And I think it is the easiest way to keep it from being a party building. Well, it's not, I don't, you know, I don't see it being a party building. building. I mean, it's, we're, we're in wait. Right. But if, I think that, that's a longer discussion to have. Okay, well then I don't want to and put I don't, a time. Yeah, I, I don't object to, to us coming back to it. I don't think it needs to be in the policy that we will revisit the policy. Right. I mean, we revisit policies all the time. Right. Um, I think there was um, some worry though that uh, uh, someone uh, voiced that um, the, the way 11.4, especially in maybe 11.3 as well, were worded. Um, is that you know we, we could change this policy without getting input from abutters and i wonder how to um, how, how to address that. i think they, they just really want to be notified if we're going to be trying to change the town hall policy and i think that's a, a, a good thing uh, and i don't know if that's a thing that you put in policy either could you add 11.5 that any any changes uh, uh considered by the select board would be would only occur um, yeah. prior w w with notice to to abutters how about the select board shall use best efforts to provide 48 hours notice to direct abutters of scheduled meetings at which substantive changes to this policy will be considered say that again the select board shall use best efforts to provide 48 hours notice to direct abutters or at least 48 hours notice to direct the butters of scheduled meetings at which the, at which substantive changes to this policy will be discussed and considered. Is, is best effort somewhat gray or overly gray? Well, yeah. I mean, we could we could write, we could use shall provide 48 hours notice to direct the butters. Well, you, you say duly noticed meeting in 11-4. Yep. Isn't that 48 hours already? Duly noticed? Yep. Right, I think it's posted That's just in a few places agenda. that people could miss posting. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what the request was is that is is that there be notification sent to direct the butters so that they could have some input and when, I, when I the board is changed when the board wants to consider changes to that. It, which I agree. I think I think it's reasonable. It's not a it's not a heavy lift to to do that. Changes um, to yeah. Changes to the policy or changes to the use of it? Changes to the policy. Yeah. I mean, so, so a change to the policy could be the one you just talked about in terms of serving alcohol. That would be a change to the policy, but not a change of the use of the, of the town hall. And, and okay. So in a related question in my mind is, is what to do about 11.3 based on, on those concerns that were expressed. 11.3 says, select board can make exceptions at any time it wants when it's in the best interest of the town which I think makes um, some of the neighbors a little bit nervous because arguably you could make an exception to the alcohol policy um, so um, yeah but I, I, I get that be to strike 11.3 just to the other side of the coin for a second the select board in its current composition or some composition 20 years down the road as, as the person correctly points out the select board is elected in theory with the trust and confidence of the people of Waitley that they will make decisions not rashly but with all perspectives in mind and I worry that taking that act sets a precedent that the select board has to then go to, what's to prevent someone from saying, no, the select board, before you do X, 
you've got to do Y. And then it's just a snowball. So I, I, I just worry that, that if, if, we, if we strike 11.3 yep. and take that ability away from us, we're essentially saying we, we lose our ability to, to, to oversee the town as we were elected to do. We, we, we are saying that any change to policy is going to have notification of the butters. Yep. But I, I worry that we, we, we tie our hands if we say any time we want to make an exception, we have to notify the butters and that's process and, and, and then we're not we're not fulfilling our responsibilities. We're, we're just saying we're, we're, we're passing off our responsibility to govern to, to whoever is in the immediate vicinity of, of that specific. And, and again, I'm, I'm worried about press. Yeah, I think, I think the, the 11 3 is a lot harder to come up with something like notification that would actually work because the whole purpose of 11.3 is to give us some flexibility because you know, this is our first time doing this. So I, I agree with John that the notification should apply to 11.4. Um, but I think it, it, uh, letting the others know that, you know, we, we hear them and we understand their, um, you know, that they want input and that we appreciate their input, I think that could go a long way, just um, expressing that um, and that we, we don't, won't be making exceptions lightly. I feel like the exceptions that we're most likely to make are going to be things like waiving the fee or waiving the you know, uh, you know insurance or something like that. When and I, I'm just thinking about all of those other rules and other places, I don't think we're going to be waiving the alcohol and cannabis anytime soon. Um, you know that that's the that to me that we if they could have some assurance that when we're thinking about um, um, the exceptions to the policy we're not thinking of exceptions to allow a wedding there or to let it become the party bar right that and, that, and i think that could go a long way towards helping people feel more comfortable the abutters with 11.3 and i think that's what it's really about on that that you know, they, if, if they feel like we are fair people who are hearing them and responsible elected officials, then I think that might actually um, that might actually work. And then with four, we just put in the phrase that Ryan said about notification. I think that's what we should do. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm all for that. Okay, that that sounds sounds good to me. I, I think that yeah, I like to leave eleven three in the way it is because you know. The, Looking ahead the next few years, you know, we're, we're going to have a big party here in town, and we don't know what, how that's going to happen, what events, and all that. That could violate this policy, but it's the best interest of the town to do it. So, you know, uh, that's why I like to leave 11 3 in. We can decide if we want to do it with that event or exception or not. Okay, so let's add Brian's on to 11 4. Okay. Um, no time limit on anything we're good to go okay do we and we'll vote on this next time um you can vote on it now with the changes or we can come back <coughs> excuse we me need to sign, we, don't, we need to sign anything you don't need to sign anything now well i make a motion we approve it that with this changes that are already that we discussed and the changes that are in here for 11.5 i get four or five 11.4. 11.4. Okay. So and and so 11.4 and also adding the 9.3 amendment that Joyce mentioned. Right. Okay. All right. So let me just let me just read the changes that are being made. Uh, 9.3. Um, smoking or vaping of any substances, including but not limited to tobacco and cannabis, and the use of legal substances in the town hall and on town hall property, strictly prohibited. 9.4. The consumption of alcohol. Um, we want and cannabis yeah in the town hall in the town hall property strictly prohibited on 9.9 .9, we're going to the second line we're going to change we're going to strike that and we're going to put in who yeah. right thank you what 
And those are requests from Joyce that we that it says users of the town users of the town hall who do not leave the building. Uh, I got you. Okay. And then eleven point four, we're adding the sentence to select board. Do we want to say the select board shall provide forty eight hours notice? Yes. Select board shall provide 48 hours notice to direct the butters of scheduled meetings at which sub substantive changes to this policy will be considered by the select board. Okay, that's a motion I'd like to make. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Brad? Aye. Me? Aye. So by this will be posted on our website? Yep, we'll make those changes. In the make the changes and post, okay. Okay, new pro lease. I wanted to start the conversation about this. Uh, the new pro lease, it was uh, originally an 18 month lease and 18 months will be up in uh, January 1st. So if we want to, I should actually say, enter into a new lease because there's not a provision for extending it. Um, with new pro, we would have to do it before uh, January 1. Um, overall, it's been a good experience. We haven't had any issues with, with payment of rent. Um, we haven't had any operational issues really to speak of. Um, They've been uh, pretty quiet tenants, except for the forklifts going back and forth, or forth, or the, occa <laughs> or the occasional um, uh, tractor trailer truck that unloads in the back. But in terms of disrupting our operations, it, it's really been non-existent. Um, and I don't foresee the immediate need for the space um, that they're currently occupying. We've we've done well with them back there uh, so well, I would move that we enter into a new lease agreement is it 18 months we're talking about again yeah 18 months um, 18 months is, is what we did last time and I would recommend that again what's our out clause um, five months five months to terminate for both parties um, I think we wanted a shorter one and they asked for a longer one and we I think we met at five months no one's banging down the door to rent the space. Other than that. Paying, I, I haven't heard anything. Um, and it's been very beneficial to them to be able to rent the space. Uh, I think their business continues to do well. I know that they've had discussions about trying to expand on, in their, on their lot there. I'm not sure how, um, how those are going. Um, but it's, okay. it's good to okay. you know, support a local business. People in town for now, forever, hopefully. I have two questions. Your map here is showing the yep. location. Is, is that a wall there, or is, what, what is there where you're showing the? No, those are just a row of posts. Just a row of posts, yep. okay. And what's in, in the, the other area they're not renting? We have stuff in there. We have more boxes and old shelving and filing cabinets um, that fill up that space. Okay. Um, I, oh, so the what's uh, I'm trying to see the map here. So does the lease refer to the map? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Or square footage? No square footage. There's a square footage on top of the lease. Around 4,400 square feet. Um, oh, okay. And what's in here now? The that, safe okay. is in here now, which goes back a little ways. Uh, eventually, what's going to happen is that the area. Half of this area, right, that you referred to, Fred, to the um, between the wall and, and new pro space. Half of that's taken up by the vault now. The other half will hopefully become an uh, open storage area. And so I don't. We don't want to give up any more space, in, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Does the eighteen hundred include utilities? Yes. We're paying all of that. What is? Their, their share, or how does that, how much does that amount to? Um, they have, in terms of heat, they don't have any additional requirements beyond what we need to do to keep the sprinkler system from freezing. That's in the garage or both? In both. So we'd have to do that anyway? We would have to do that anyways. Okay. Um, their, their electricity usage is, is pretty minimal. Um, they're not there that often. They're coming in with forklift and they're uh, weaving. So does it increase our plowing need? Would we not plow that area if they weren't there? No, I think we would still plow it. Why? Um, probably to be able to get in and out of the garage. It, it, if 
if they were if, if they were not occupying that space, I'm sure we would park some vehicles back there. Right. Get in the past. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I would second Joyce's motion. So this this says for eighteen months. Yeah. This is this is the old lease that that we have here. Um, but it would be for a, a new lease for an additional eighteen months. Starting in, from January till uh, what July of twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so if we're keeping eighteen, we're comfortable eighteen hundred a month. I, I guess it, it's a, looking ahead, we should look at negotiating that maybe a little higher. But things keep going up. The price of everything goes up. So for this for this term the next term yeah I, I guess i can agree with that but after that i think we should look at that yeah it sounds reasonable okay okay i seconded the motion all those in favor joyce aye fred aye me aye snowmobile club vehicles parked on uh which i assume is the de mayo property yep yeah. they would like to park their trailers there I don't, in the past. I don't see any reason why we would change our oh. past policy. Um, there were no incidents regarding them parking there in the past, as far as I have heard. Not so that I, I don't see any reason not, that that I not to grant that. Were you going to assist in them, Brian? I, I didn't recall if we did a roll call vote for the lease, did we? We did. We just did. Yeah, you're good. Got a long day. That's okay. All right, so Snowmobile Club gets to use the parking lot on 510 Western Mass Mother's Day Half Marathon. So this is not, uh, another item I wanted to start the discussion about. Uh, last time we had this race, there was some concerns raised by our, uh, by our fire chief about inadequate notice um, for the event. I don't know if you recall that. Um, so. I just wanted to, and I, I've seen the race advertised, so um, I just wanted to see if, if you had any um, any concerns or, or um, issues with, with this happening again and using the, the, the town property between, um, it was really between the fire station and the field in between, and then um, I'm sure there's some parking that happens at the highway garage. Um, and I just kind of wanted to get this out there and just start the ball rolling so that we have an adequate um, notice to everybody that that this event will be coming up. I just want to get more visibility for the town. But yeah. no, I think we should start doing it now. But this is a big deal. We should amplify it. We should. Is it always been at that location? I mean, now we got to we're trying to use the center of town for as, more activities. As far as I know, it's always it's always. Didn't they that. didn't they start at the pond at one point? Where? Those are the triathlons. They used to have triathlons there. Yeah. Like, I, I so they didn't do the marathon there. No, I used to do oh. some triathlons there. Okay. I think they need to start someplace near uh, large parking, and I think they can get that at either Yankee Candle oh, right, or at the right. right. yeah, yeah. No, I think. Yeah. I think we should we should do this and we should amplify it and we should make it as part of our marketing of Waitley as a as a nice place to live, you know, work and play. And so long as the organizers will you know cooperate with our police and fire folks right. and make sure that they're in the loop. Yeah. I mean it it sounds like that might have been a little bit of an issue if Brian is just reading about it and he didn't hear about it from our fire chief. Oh no! I heard. Oh, trust me, I heard. I heard about it from our fire chief. Yeah, that was. Oh. We discussed that. He came that to the meeting. Yeah, several um, times. Yeah. But so was, oh, okay, yeah, but that was. But for the coming year, have they been back in touch with our police and fire yet? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, she reached out to us. She reached out oh, okay. um, to us, asking us sort of what we should do and what the process should be. Um, you know. I'll be in touch with her, but I just wanted to make sure that the board was okay in concept with it taking right. place on town property. Um, no. I don't have any problem with that, but I do, I do insist that they 
the um, do better with um, working with our public officials. Yeah. And I, I guess I'm just suggestion to Joy since you're on the 250th committee that may be another opportunity to do some advertising or fundraising or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So they bring that to bring that to their meeting. It's a good idea. Okay, in the, in the January meeting. Yeah. Right. Okay. Go run 250 miles. Yeah. <laughs> 250 mile road race. Um, okay. Administrator updates. Few and far between, I assume. Well, we get a couple other ones. Uh, one more appointment to the Whitley Cultural Council. Oh, Cultural Council. I'm sorry. So the term of Carolyn Gear has ended, and she has resigned. Or she resigned, or she is not um, accepting renomination. She's not accepting renomination. So uh, we have a request from um, that Jenny Morrison be appointed to the Whitley Cultural Council. Uh, I would nominate her to be on the Cultural Council. I would second that. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Brad? Aye. Me? Aye. Now, time to minister your updates. Few and far between. I just want to, if I can find it. So, as part of the, um, the supplemental budget bill that was passed, by the legislature and the governor, we have received an additional almost $29,000 of Chapter 90 funds. Um, so, I let Keith know that, but I wanted to let you guys know there's some additional money there. Thank you to the governor and the legislature. Um, that's really about it. Okay. Not anticipated within 48 hours. I don't have anything. I, mean, I guess one of the, unless you moved on from me. Um, one of the things. Oh, I'm sorry, did I jump the gun? No, I'll go back if I can for a second. Um, notices for, um, Submitting capital planning projects have been sent out to department heads, boards, and committees. And if they could send back to me capital project ideas for, I think we're already FY20, fiscal year 20, um, that would be uh, very much appreciated. Um, we're trying to start the process a little bit earlier and have a little bit more in depth, um, a, little, a little more work by the uh, capital improvement planning committee other than um, a single meeting. Hopefully we can get um, some slight visits and some meaningful discussion with department heads so that we get a better understanding of what our capital needs are for the next five and 10 years. Who's our rep from the select board? Is it Fred? Fred. Yeah, okay. um, along those same lines, when are CPA applications due? That has to be coming up. December. They have a meeting scheduled in December, I think. It's sometime early December. Um, well, see, my question was more, I, I knew it would probably be the month of December. My question was yeah. looking for a more definitive exactly. date. Exactly. Uh, maybe December. Um, I can email you that. Okay, the people it, should know. Cause it, yeah, I'm sure it says it on the, this will be hard to navigate to, but it's the, it's the I'm sure it's on the CPC part of the website. Um, they're usually pretty good about posting it, but we should actually um, we can put that on the front page. Calendar off the website page. too. Yep. Um, okay. Anything else? No, not not really. No. All right. So our next meeting is the twelfth. Now, uh, how are we are we doing this uh, meeting before the special town meeting, or after, or in the middle, or what? Because I three articles we probably don't need, but what? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So 15 minutes is being incredibly so, generous. And that's at seven, so. Right, so it's advertised for seven. Yeah, then, well, why don't we meet at six, and um, if we if we go over seven, we can uh, uh, poke, Come like, back. I don't know, pause our meeting, and uh, do the special town meeting, and then take up any business we don't get done in that, uh, in that first hour, right I, after that. I think that's a good idea, because I, I, I do think that this should be our one and only meeting for the month. So we're not going to meet the 26th. That's the next two-week period. Yeah, I, I, hey, I'll I, be back for that. 
I, I don't really want to meet unless we have something. I, I don't know. Well, that, that's why I said that's why sign I'm the suggesting. Warrant, sign the warrant. Sign the warrant. With, with, I'm suggesting that we don't be shy about going back into town uh, into our meeting yeah. on the 12th, well, so that right. we don't have to. You have to do right. that. Yes. Right. So right. one of the main issues we'll deal with on on the 12th are the uh, licenses for calendar year 2019. Um, mm -hmm. We will need some clarity between now and then, uh, and we may not get it um, on, on one of the alcohol licenses. Um, so I could we, yeah, could we on, on that particular alcohol license, could we ask our, our chief of police to, uh, to give us a summary of incidents at that location? Yep. Uh, or, or just to be fair to any alcohol license, uh, any police incidents that they have? Yep. For what time period? Uh, let's say the past year. Past year. The past one year. 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, okay. and we can we can we can I mean we shouldn't just single out one particular place. We can look them all. Yeah. And yeah, any alcohol related things. That's probably uh, that would be good information to have. Yep. I, I think yeah, that would be good, but it may have been in relation to yes total incidents for the town compared to, to so we know the magnitude I mean if we have three right. uh, alcohol related to these places but we have 15 alcohol related we're less on arrests on Christian Lane well <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and keep it a, a, to give us some perspective of what that means for right, the town. Well, right. and also have them bring the benchmark I mean, if there are, let's say there are three over the past year, yeah. compared to what in 2017. Right, right. I mean, maybe it's yeah. down from 15, we're like, whoa, good. Yeah. So um, I, I actually think that maybe it's a good idea to have Chief come in yeah. and talk about what his training plans have been or are going to be for um, better understanding someone under the uh, under the uh, influence. influence of cannabis, yeah, it's because it's not as easy as alcohol as we probably all know. Um, but I do think that that would also be something that the town people would be interested in hearing how we're going to try to monitor um, people driving under yeah. the influence. And I guess along the same lines, we haven't heard recently what the chief is doing for every quarter of his right, I'll ask him. Uh, oh, that's a fair performance point. standards, I, I guess. Uh, whatever we heard the first two, it. but we haven't heard since three and four. Right. Yeah. Right. What right. he's been doing and proposing to do and yeah. kind of related to cannabis stuff, I, I guess, could be tied into that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Hi. Me, I. Good night and good luck.